I can't give you a pushing movement without giving you a pulling movement too. It makes you stronger and more stable in your pushing. You gotta get that rear delt hit and have the shoulder stabilization, all the things. There's not a better one, in my opinion, for football players than the pull-up. Yes, we've all heard of it, we've all done it, but it's critical for football players because you're banged up during the season. You're, you've got a lot of demands going. It could be your wrist, your thumb, your fingers, your elbow. You can usually find a grip on a pull-up bar even if you have to manufacture it, rag, stay with me, that is comfortable for you to get that musculature worked. It's a much more functional movement. I, I've gotten so strong on the pull downs in, in my past where I could hit the whole rat stack you know, 20 times and still not hit double digit pull ups at that same time because I wasn't training it. I felt a lot better when I was doing them. And I'll give you a little two for one here. Fingers, you don't wanna have fingers that look like mine. You see this guy right here? It looks like an alien. So does this one. You got to train the fingers. You got to train the grip and the hands. A great way of doing that on the pull-up. Take this rag. Throw it over here. I'll just go neutral grip on this one. Grab it tight and you'll have to hold it tight the whole time. <sighs> See, I'm already slipping off. I haven't trained this in so long. They're weak. And it's going to hurt really bad. You'll feel even some... A little bit of tendon pain sometimes forces you to control it. It feels like you, just, you know, your, your hands are all messed up after. Over time, it gets better and better, and you feel that translate to the field. You're constantly having to grab guys, and your fingers are lodged, you know, between their shoulder pads and weird plastic pieces and metal parts, and you throw them, and stuff gets caught. And if they're not strong, you know, you end up with alien fingers like I do. This is a great way uh, to keep them strong and to prevent injury. The pull-up is a very scalable movement. I love it because you can go all out body weight, get a great workout. You can find a lot of different ways to get weight, um, a weighted situation in there. If you have a workout partner, you can go to failure, beyond failure. They push you up, eccentric down. And one of the best parts to it is you don't need a gym for it. You can find a way to do pull-ups just about anywhere. You can go regular pull-ups. Here's an extra tip, by the way, too. Say I started failing on that. Okay, let me try some uh, wide grip neutral. Say I started failing on that. Boom, come down here, 45 degree. Crank out a little more. And then go to the straight up neutral. That's the easiest position to crank out a lot. Okay. Then you can go underhanded grip, which would be officially called chin-ups. Let me give you another little tidbit. My college strength and conditioning coach, Aaron Wellman, who is still and has been for many years the head strength and conditioning coach for the New York Giants, had all of the team test max out chin-ups. Got a good warm-up in. Everybody did a max set. He recorded it all. He didn't tell us why. I came to find out later why, and a lot of football programs do this, because most of the time, the fastest guys on your team have the highest number in the chin-up. I've heard a lot of different explanations. I'm not necessarily the guy to spit that out to you, but that was the biggest sell for me to keep pull-ups always in my regimen. Go get you some pull-ups.